Within a month after the outbreak of novel coronavirus in China, on 5th of Feb 2020, research team at Shanghai Tech University published a structure or a picture of a virus by utilizing a technique called X-ray crystallography at Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility. Before dissecting this sentence apart, firstly, I would like to draw your attention on why is it important to understand the structure of the virus. Understanding why might help you to admire the science and technology involved behind in order to obtain such images. Which brings us to the second section of the video where we will try to understand why do we have the words like X-ray and bigger synchrotron facility in the published article. Or in another word, how scientists obtain the 3D image of virus or of any biological molecule in general. Seeing is believing. When it comes to understanding the virus, its structure is the crucial. If you are thinking about novel coronavirus, aka SARS-CoV-2, the name Corona comes from its structure, which are small spikes coming out of the virus body in the shape of a little crown. But do we need to know the structure only for the sake of naming it? Probably not. We need to know the structure of a virus in order to understand how it interacts with the host body or host cell for its replication. Knowing the structure is the important information to have in your plate if you want to develop the vaccine. For example, if our living cells are exposed with virus-like particles or false virus having similar structure, it helps human body to develop an immune system without being exposed to the alive deadly virus. Therefore, the knowing the virus structure is about knowing the disease and about finding its cure. Sooner, the better. So let's try to understand how scientists obtain the 3D image of virus or of any biological molecule in general. You must be familiar with the concept that to see any object smaller in size, you need an instrument called the microscope. Well, what does this instrument do because of which you can see the smaller objects? Microscope converses the scattered visible light to focus at a place with the help of lenses. What if you want to see something very small, smaller than the wavelength of the visible light? Well, you will simply choose the light with a smaller wavelength, and that is X-ray. X-ray has a wavelength about the size of an atom, unlike the visible wave. But the problem is there are no lenses to focus the X-rays. Now, what do you do? Even though you have X-ray, but you cannot focus it and create an image, this brings us to the concept of diffraction. What does diffraction mean? Any light wave passing through the small slit or hole diffract if the size of the hole is in the order of the wavelength of light. That means if you put two slits or hole in front of a visible wave that is laser light, you can see the diffraction pattern appearing in the screen. Here the size of the slit is in the order of the visible wavelength and our eye can see the visible wave so we can easily see the diffraction pattern at the screen. Now what will happen if we increase the number of slits from 2 to 6? Well the answer is the pattern series of dots on the screen does not change. The scattered light from slit is focused at the dot making it brighter so the pattern will be more distinct and easier for analysis. There are two important messages to remember from this demonstration. One, the spacing of the slit from which light passes should be in the order of the wavelength of light for the diffraction phenomena to occur. Second, the repetition of the slits helps to obtain the distinctive diffraction pattern. This repetition is what we find in crystal structure. Therefore, crystal structure gives a nice and clear diffraction pattern. In similar fashion, X-ray also diffract if passes through the smaller slit. But wait, the wavelength of X-ray is very very small in compared to the visible wave. It happens to be the distance between the atoms found in the crystal like table salt are in the range of X-ray's wavelength. Yes, you can pass the X-ray through the crystal like table salt and obtain the diffraction pattern. But remember, you cannot see X-ray, so in order to see those diffraction pattern, you need photographic plates. In early days, scientists used photographic plates to record and analyze those pattern, but nowadays it can be done via computer. By now, you must have realized the diffraction pattern is a fancy way to say the array of dots. From these array of dots, you can work out the position of atom in your crystal. 
and the intensity of the scattered ray is carrying the information of electron density at the point from which it is scattered. These diffracted dots are the fingerprint of the atoms or molecule inside the crystal. You might be wondering, it is not straightforward to see this relation of pattern back to the 3D structure of material. Yes, it is not in the first place. That is why it took years and many intelligent brains in order to figure out this particular reverse gear. With the help of mathematics, especially Fourier transform, it worked like magic, giving the image from these dots. An important remark I would like to make at this point is, when you are talking about medical x-ray images, you ignore the scattered radiation and only consider the transmitted radiation. But in the technique I am describing now, relies on the scattered radiations as these scattered radiations contain the information about the object which is scattering. Now getting back to the structure of virus. For simplicity, let us take a protein instead of virus. In principle, we can do X-ray diffraction from single protein, but it is very difficult to do so. Firstly, the protein of our interest is very small and it is difficult to pick up an individual protein. Even though, if you manage to pick it up and put it into the X-ray beam, it will scatter so few photons of X-ray that you won't be able to measure it. So the trick is, you start with your protein or whatever molecule you are interested in and try to grow the crystal of it. Growing a crystal means repeating that particular protein in regular fashion in all directions. As you already know, such crystal or regularly arranged protein will give you the amplified or bright signal in comparison to the single protein. By measuring the intensity and the position of diffraction dots, you can work back the structure of the protein. What if the protein structure is very complex, then you can only grow small and delicate crystal out of it. Such a small crystal must be taken to very powerful X-ray sources. This is the part where Sengai Synchrotron Radiation Facility comes into our story. Synchrotron is the facility where you can generate very powerful X-rays. Nowadays, Synchrotron Facility can investigate the smaller crystal even down to 1 by 5000 of millimeter in size, which you must do if you want to study the large and more complex protein structures. Inside these facilities, nowadays detector can record multiple photographs a second, thus speeding the overall process. Although we might have speed up the overall process, there are still a lot of challenges in obtaining the fine resolution of the virus image. To mention one of such challenge would be, what if you cannot crystallize the virus or the molecule in the first place? Well, in such cases, you have to use other techniques like cryo-electron microscopy, explanation of which will need another video. I know what you are thinking now, have scientists used other techniques to study the structure of coronavirus? And the answer is yes. For the sake of not prolonging this video, I would like to stop it at this point. The link of all the studies mentioned in this video will be provided in the description. Thank you for watching.